Thank you, Whitney. And welcome, everybody. Uh, as Whitney said, my name is Matt Shanahan. I'm our Chief Strategy Officer, and I host a biweekly roundtable with our customers to listen to what they're saying about the current environment. Most accounts receivable departments, as you know, are on the front line of the business response to the pandemic. And today I'll be sharing some of their insights about remote work. First, a quick background on Anytime Collect. Anytime Collect is an accounts receivable automation solution from Lockstep. Anytime Collect makes it faster and easier to collect cash. And it also makes your bank balance bigger. So Anytime Collect right now is in use by over 160 companies globally. Uh, so we do um, service you know, people in Australia, Portugal, uh, you know, around the globe. And there's more than 10,000 users of our application. So it's, um, it's well adopted and it's been proven in the industry extremely well. And we've got you covered. Um, depending on the accounting system that you're using or your ERP, we're the leaders in uh, integration. These are just some of the systems that we have direct integration to, and we're adding more all the time. So you know, certainly if you don't see yours there, feel free to reach out. Now, shelter in place has triggered a massive migration from working in the office to work from home. So I live in Washington state uh, in the US. And this, is, um, this chart here is actually indicating by state how the United States um, individual states went into shelter in place and which order and the timing on that. Now I live in Washington state went, that went into shelter in place on March 23rd. Uh, we are currently on day 59. Um, one of the big realizations during this migration as we talk to our customers is just how essential accounts receivable teams are now. I mean, they are, they're really on the front line and giving continuity of the collections has become a critical point to surviving kind of all of this, this business, especially as access to the credit has tightened up. Another realization is that shelter in place will change how accounts receivable operates, not only now, but in the future. We will all reopen, it will happen at different times, but it will be to a new normal. Business reopening is occurring for you know, a lot of places in sort of four phases. Um, in Washington, for instance, we have 10 counties that um, are opening into phase two today. So it's not even just kind of statewide, it's county by county, they're doing different things. And as that reopening happened, it's really clear that we won't go back to doing things exactly as they were. What will be that new normal? Um, the office environment will certainly be changed. A lot of uh, new standards about working in offices are starting to uh, pop up. So reopening is requiring new safeguards such as plexiglass between desks and new protocols for screening people. Social distancing will impact the number of people that can be in a break room or a common area or even the office in general. It also is certain that fewer people will return to the office on a daily basis. And that's exactly what um, is starting to pop up. So this is a survey uh, done by Gartner, a large analyst firm. And you can see that remote work is really here to say, stay. In this survey, Gartner said that over 65% of the companies that they surveyed currently have over 61% of their employees working remotely. So that's while the pandemic is going on. But that post pandemic, uh, the expectation across all of those companies in the survey was that 41% of the employees are likely to continue working remotely at least part-time you know, going into the future. So that's 41% of all the employees across all those companies. It turns out employees like remote work and are more productive. Another survey indicated the vast majority of the workforce wants to work from home. They see it as a benefit um, after the pandemic or, and, and again, at least part-time. So this survey was to over 2,500 different people. Um, interestingly, 55% of the people in this survey had never done remote work in the past, and they were sort of apprehensive about it. But as it turned out, you know, they, they're enjoying it, they're being more productive uh, with the flexibility it provides. 
And so consequently, companies are really needing to think about remote work as a part of their strategy, uh, especially in technology. So this is an article that was just yesterday. Um, you know, it says with remote work here to say, IT executives are reassessing tech priorities. In this article, it breaks down the fact that, for instance, Dropbox, uh, which makes a cloud application, is reviewing all of the apps that they use. Um, if they don't see value, that application seeing value for a remote workforce, they're going to cancel use of the application. And so it's really this move, there's this you know, very tangible move to a remote first mindset that's starting to kick in. And so that's you know, where some of these new models will come into play. And we thought we'd right here and see if we could do a poll um, and see how this might be impacting everybody. So if you get a chance, we'd love to hear from you. Just uh, indicate, you know, will you continue to work from home after reopening? I'll give you another minute or so to fill out. Share with your colleagues what, uh, what, what's going on. All right, thank you. So the new normal will have multiple models of remote work as we talked about. Some staff will remain 100% remote. Some will enter into a hybrid model where they come into the office part of the time and work from home part of the time. Uh, their staff may return to the full office, but be, be always prepared to move to a remote work model if the shelter in place kicks in again, right? So we're, we're very much seeing this as we talk to all the different companies. You know, we have some of our customers that uh, were, um, did not go to remote because their states did not change that. And it was interesting to hear their perspectives. Um, and some of them are actually, again, wanting to see if they can actually move into that mode. Now, for accounts receivable, the migration to remote work really exposed some underlying conditions that need to be addressed to be productive in, in, the, in the future, right? And may be scalable. First, the pandemic exposed the problem of manual processes. The pandemic increased the workload because there's you know, increased collections risk. All the traditional credit scores are out the window. Accounts receivable staff now want to contact as many customers as possible to assess collectability. But who should you call first? What are the priorities? Much of that decision-making is really up to the individual collector or staff person. Each staff member is starting the day reviewing their inbox, maybe looking at a manual aging report, and they make up their to-do list for the day. Then they set out calling to ask for confirmations. Installment plans are becoming more common and they need to extend payment terms and obtain promises. All of these confirmations, plans, extensions, and promises need to be recorded and tracked and followed up on. But where, how? For most, it really means spreadsheets, right? And spreadsheets spread all over at everybody's different location. And that's lots of manual data entry into these spreadsheets. And the spreadsheets don't have any automation, right? When to follow up and what to do, et cetera. So it's exposed this manual process that's been built on Outlook and Excel. The pandemic also exposed what we call office anchors. Many offices, you know, phones don't get connected or can't be forwarded to mobile phone numbers. So if tele telephony integration wasn't in place prior to the work from home mandate, then many customer calls and follow-ups are stuck in corporate phone systems creating delays. Customers may also require copies of purchase orders or supporting documentation, such as proof of delivery before they pay. Often these documents are stored on premises, either in paper or on a file server. So even though you might be able to connect via VPN, the access is slow and incomplete. Without an online payment option, customers will typically resort to paper checks. They have to. They, the, and there's lots of issues with that. They may have their own issues getting checks signed and cut, and then if it gets mailed to you, it, you have to leave your home to go to the office to get it and then get it deposited. Um, that creates a risk of exposure. You're also losing valuable time and travel. Um, and paper checks are getting slowed up because the mail system is being uh, slowed up. 
So there's a bunch of issues that are really popping up as a result of this sort of office anchors that exist. Then there's manual reporting. What used to be weekly forecasts, maybe cash forecasts um, and reporting is now becoming daily. There's growing requirements, which means the accounts receivable staff have more cut and paste assembly to do and more email distribution to do. How do you know who's working on what? What got done? Did the teams focus on the right thing? These are questions that can't be answered walking around the room and pulling. If the reporting is manual, that reporting time is going to take away from valuable collections effort. Likewise, upper management is requiring more frequent forecasting. When that forecasting is also manual, it takes up even more time of that valuable um, conversation that could be had with customers instead. Finally, the pandemic exposed a required shift in culture, a cultural shift to embracing technology. Accounting departments don't have a great track record on this. In fact, the Hackett Group recently reported that one of the biggest obstacles to reducing day sales outstanding was the lack of technology adoption by accounting departments. Let me provide an example of why technology is so important in a remote work environment. One of the big secrets about remote work is the work itself becomes the yardstick to judge performance. When you can't see someone all day, the only thing you can evaluate is the work. A lot of what I would call petty evaluation stats melt away. Criteria like, was that person here at nine? Or did she take too many breaks today? You can't tally that anymore. What you're left with is, what did this person actually do today? You have to be able to easily capture and measure the work which Outlook and Excel were never designed to do. And when you have a technology stack built on Outlook and Excel, it makes remote work very difficult. To be successful in the new normal, you need to really think about embracing and adopting technology. So here are the keys to collections efficiency in remote work environment. First, you need to be able to leverage the cloud to let staff work anywhere at any time. You also need to automate customer communications based on the aging of the invoices. This frees up the valuable time of the staff from doing these tedious reminders or dunnings, et cetera, from that, that process. You need to give online self-service access to your customers. They need to be able to go to a portal, get their invoices, make payments, and communicate with you. That's going to you know, essentially clear out your inbox, if you will, and also get your cash a lot faster. You need to empower your staff with tools to automate a lot of the you know, mundane administrative work of the day. How do you automate to-do list generation for them? How can you consolidate information so they can see it all in one place? How do you make tracking of follow-ups and promises automated so they're not having to manually track it inside a spreadsheet? These are the kinds of things that really empower staff because you've gotten rid of the tedious work, they can focus on the most important things like those conversations with customers. And finally, you wanna be able to automate forecasting and reporting to all the stakeholders to keep everybody in the know. Let's look at how this works. The way Anytime Collect works is we directly connect with an ERP uh, to copy over the data necessary for the collections process. On top of that, there's a rules engine called Accounts Receivable Sequencing that's able to take your credit and collections policies and automate those business rules. It does so by automatically sending out communications. It can trigger an automated communication either through email, a text, or actually an automated call to the customer. Those communications carry with them directions and links to bring the customer back to a customer self-service portal where they can view their information and make payments online. Now, if everything's working well, this is 100% automated. There's nothing where anybody has to get involved and make a call, et cetera. This is all being done automatically. But periodically, obviously, customers may have their own challenges and issue and may go past due, and there may be some follow-up that needs to happen. And that's when the rules engine is able to create an activity, assign it to a collector, and the collector can then go and follow up with the customer directly. 
So this is how automation is working in conjunction to make all of this happen. And because it's in the cloud, it's able to run this from anywhere, including a remote work situation. And so this is direct feedback from our customers regarding uh, what's going on today in the remote work world. So this is um, a, a manufacturer of lights for commercial lighting. And you can see here that they think that it's a real game changer to be able to send out all of these uh, communications. What you see to the left there is just a, a screenshot of all the communication templates that come inside Anytime Collect. These are able to be, you know, emails, calls, texts, et cetera, highly personalized, right? So they're able to actually swap in, you know, the details about the account, the customer, et cetera, and trigger them at the right time based on the aging. This is a, our, the customer self-service portal. Um, so it's showing here how somebody can actually go online, select some invoices and make a payment. Um, another one of our customers it was used this very um, innovatively. They provide um, contractor supplies, paint supplies. And in order to stay open, they didn't want anybody to actually come inside their um, stores or their pickup location because that would you know, sort of violate the protocol. And they didn't, for safety reasons, didn't want people inside or their staff exposed that way. So what they did is they took phone orders um, um, after which then they were able to issue an invoice immediately. Those invoices went into the portal. Um, they were able to make a payment, you know, the customer could then make a payment, come curbside and pick up all the things. So they were able to keep their commerce going by being able to have it an automated accounts receivable process. So it's a, another great example of what to do in a remote situation. This is a company, they make um, signs, uh, whether it's for uh, buildings or roads and things along those lines. And it's a quote, the emoji that you see there is actually not added by us, that was added by the customer. And they talk about how it makes it easy for everyone working with home that this is able to make it much more possible. What you see here is the, what we call the collector's cockpit. So as a collector, I'm getting a list of the next best action. So I'm not having to come up with this list. The rules engine is uh, making that available for me. As I click on any of those, it brings me right into the activity. So all the resources I need to complete that activity are given to me, including things like contacts and automated dialing. Um, and then up at the top, it's tracking my progress. Yeah, so I can um, know what my goals are and how I'm doing in, in attaining those goals. And then the ability to think about how do you automate reporting? So World Shipping, again, and one of our customers is able to go in and you know, without having to see someone face to face, they know exactly what's been done, right? And they can measure um, each person and how they're doing, look for maybe where somebody might need some help, making sure also to give credit to the, the people who are really doing well. So it's that ability. And that's what you see here is just kind of a, a breakdown of the team and how they're performing you know, for the day, how many accounts did they touch, um, you know, if there are customer inquiries that have been followed up on, how many might those be, et cetera. So it's some important things along those lines that allows you to have visibility into your team at, up to the minute and be able to coach those, those opportunities. And then the ability to forecast with confidence. We talked about the forecasting and, and how important that is. You know, what cash is coming in the next seven days? What cash is coming in 30 days from now for the month? Where are we? And then what is, what is the projection based on? Are there customer promise to pays in that projection? Um, are there judgment calls by each collector? Um, is it predicted by the system based on past payment behavior? And then is there a risk in there? Are there some disputes that are taking place and how much risk is there? So all of that, being able to have that real time and available uh, to all the stakeholders is incredibly important for the decision making, especially as credit is, you know, the credit crunch on certain things. So those are the five ways that Anytime Collect really gets your team ready for a remote work environment. You know, the, the SaaS solution, automated customer communications, customer self-service, the activity management for your team, 
and then the ability to forecast and report. Now, all of this comes also with a very strong business case. So there's the soft benefits of employee satisfaction and teamwork that we saw people want to be able to do remote work. So empowering them to do that and do it effectively is one part of it. But anytime Collect also provides quantifi quantifiable benefits to the bottom line. Because anytime Collect gets your cash faster, you have increased working capital that can be used to invest in the business. That increased working capital allows you to generate more cash from operations. Um, with less past due, um, staff time is freed up to focus on other priorities. And ultimately, what is, happens is you increase the liquidity by reducing DSO. And that goes straight to the bottom line, which increases your shareholder value. We work with you to quantify these kinds of benefits right up front so that there's a, a business case for being able to move forward. Again, technology adoption has to have one of these really hard ROIs in order to be able to be adopted. So let's use a real example. This is a company that we worked with. Um, they were using Outlook. Follow-up on the Outlook was sort of scattershot. They were having to split up manually who's working on which customer and which follow-up activities were taking place. So their DSOs at the time were at 44. After going live with Anytime Collect, within 60 days, it was down to 37. So their day's sales outstanding was reduced immediately. Their on-time payment, which had been you know, reasonable at 88.3%, actually jumped up to 95.7%. So again, that just being able to say, hey, we're collecting on time, our DSOs are down, and then in terms of staff time, you know, they were able to free up 54 hours of staff time per month, which then they put into focusing on their biggest customers and being able to work more collaboratively with them. So our guide, you know, if you're interested in evaluating a solution for remote work for your AR team, or even if you're evaluating it just as a, you know, collections continuity point, um, what we do is we engage with you to do an opportunity assessment. We do a complete technical discovery, develop the ROI that I mentioned on the previous one, and then go through with a proposal. So you have it, you know, there's a very methodical way that we engage and, and bring you through the process. So we'd like you to think about preparing your AR team to go remote, you know, in the new normal. Um, and if you'd like to do that, visit anytimecollect.com. Uh, there you can request a demo or an assessment as we talked about. The other thing I'd like to point out is we have a, an industry leading blog. There's a lot of really great content. We've written a lot about uh, remote work. There is actually a remote work kit on the website along with uh, some other white papers. So, you know, take advantage of those. They're great resources. And with that, we'll uh, open it up for any questions. Thanks, Matt. Um, as you said, if anybody has any questions, um, I will be polling those. I'm going to go ahead and launch one more poll, though, while we have um, <clears throat> everyone on here. So go ahead and answer that while we wait for a few questions to roll in. Okay, looks like we got one. Um, how do you measure AR work? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the key to AR work is to have predefined activities. What are the activities that individuals on the team are doing? And those activities could be things like, you know, doing an annual credit review. Uh, it could be following up on, you know, a pass to invoice. It could be resolving a dispute. But those are, you know, very defined activities. And then having a system that knows, you know, how to assign that activity and track that activity so it can be reported up. And that's what you saw um, as we showed that picture of the, the team report. And then it makes it very easy to look at, you know, how many emails did somebody do themselves that day um, as part of their activities? Um, how many phone calls were completed? Um, how many disputes resolved? All of that suddenly becomes measurable and visible. Great, thank you, Matt. Um, we had one more roll in while you were answering that. 
uh, what are the what are ways AR managers can keep their team motivated? I think one of one of the things is to always keep um, the personal side of the relationship going. We see the most successful um, teams make sure that they do things like video on all the time uh, when they when they get together. So you know, using Zoom, um, having happy hours, you know, making sure that people have a way to connect socially, um, spending time if you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, spending time up front, you know, asking how they're doing and and being engaged. So a lot of it is just making sure you've adapted what you would have done in the office to do remotely because it can be easy to forget to do that. And, and it's really important to keep that up. Thank you. And then we actually had one more come in. Um, how do you work with other departments when working remotely? Yeah, that's a great question. It's probably something I should have included in the, the presentation itself. You know, one, one department to think about in particular is sales. Um, so oftentimes what's, what's occurring in a lot of cases is people are changing credit limits and then keeping sales up to date on you know, changes in credit limits, changes in credit policy, um, those kinds of notifications where customers have suddenly, who have always been good customers are going past due. You know, just keeping that um, information flowing back and forth. We've developed uh, an integration with salesforce.com um, that does that. So any of the activities that we were talking about that a collector might be doing, those can actually be um, shared into Salesforce. So the salesperson can always see what the, the current aging of, a, of one of their accounts is, um, what any activity that's going on in the account that might be doing, you know, that's, um, you know, out of something new in terms of a past due, et cetera. So having that automated communication back and forth between systems is one of the best strategies to keeping everybody in sync. Okay, well, it looks like that was all the questions we had. Um, I wanted to go ahead and say thank you everyone for joining us. Um, make sure to keep an eye out for an email with the recording in it and we'll probably also be our next webinar coming up. So thank you, Matt, and thanks everyone for joining us again.